you pleased with the way your attorneys handled your defense? I'm sorry, but no comment. Well, you can't blame me for asking, can you? No, I don't blame you at all. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm with you. And steadfastly refused until his death to talk about his many years as an underworld financier. I can say a lot, but I'm going to reserve that for posterity. David Goldstein, Channel 4 News. Mr. Lansky, why are the American authorities after you? Because the newspaper man started a campaign against me and it snowballed to such an extent that I guess it can't be stopped anymore. I was singled out for some reason. They needed an image. And this has gone to an extent where it just snowballed and I don't know how far it's going to go. And when did the uh, snowball start rolling? Well, actually, it started about 1965, when some newspaper man wrote an article that I have $300 million. Well, I wish I had a million dollars. I said, many more things, remember, have been said about me. They accused me of making a president. Now, I don't know Mr. Nixon any more than what I read in the newspapers. And the closest I ever got to him is seeing him on television. They claim I have 50% of uh, Lebanon casinos, 50% of Monte Carlo. The Roosevelt sent me to visit Batista on a mission. Now, how ridiculous can we really get? This is just a global lie. Say it long enough and you'll get the people to believe it. So you feel that you're a victim of public persecution? I sure do. Mr. Lansky, what does the name Jewish Mafia mean to you? You know, I never heard that until I read it in the Israeli newspapers. Why, it's most ridiculous. Are there many Jews in the uh, gambling business? Well, when you say many, you'd have to judge by percentage. I think if you took the percentage of the gambling business in the United States, took the Jews, you would find them maybe in their proportion. Why is it said that you are the head of the organized crime in the United States? Well, that's the same principle that started the other gossip. That's most ridiculous. It's the news media again. It's the follow-up of the first thought. It was never said about me before years ago. All this came about just in the last few years. I didn't know as I was growing older it's going to get worse. Is there an organized crime? Is there? I have no knowledge of it. Are you a religious Jew? No, I'm not a religious Jew. And what are... But I'm a Jew. In my heart. What are your connections with uh, Joe Tasha? Just friendly. Mr. Lansky, how do you reconcile the accusations against you in so many publications with your claim of innocence? How do I reconcile it? Yep. Well, it's from the same source. They started the publicity, they could never stop. And I was told by a good authority that they'll never stop. They have too big an investment in me now. Now, I have been under surveillance for many years now maybe for the last 10 years. And I'm sure if these men didn't find anything against me who have every, uh, every resource at its hand, they should know 
whether I'm in any wrong activities or not. They would know much better than the writers. Do you want to become an uh, Israeli citizen? Yes, I do. Mr. Lansky, did you invest money in business in Israel, or do you intend to invest money? No, I'm retired. And I would like to stay as a retired man in Israel, just like any other retired Jew. Amid the strongmen and murderers who fought the Prohibition gangster wars, only one mob boss built his crime empire on the strength of his word. A handshake from Meyer Lansky was worth more than the strongest contracts that a battery of lawyers could put together. Meyer Lansky, the casino king, the quiet godfather, the very image of humility and modesty. He dressed very well. He never had loud clothes. He said, I don't want to be too flashy. A shrewd master manipulator who claimed that he never killed a man. He did business and made his living through men who regularly killed people. And so he's equally guilty. Lansky turned a natural genius for numbers into a multi-million dollar gambling empire. High rollers made and lost fortunes at his casino tables. And the hundred dollar bills were that high. Oh, it was just incredible. I'm Meyer Lansky II. I'm Meyer Lansky's grandson and namesake. And um, I want to tell my story about our trips to Miami Beach with my parents and some of the characters I would meet. They actually babysitted me, some of these guys. Um, I kind of want to go uh, ahead a little bit and talk about a guy named Jaime, who I knew later in my teen years that used to drive us all around and um, you know, he would pick me up and get me ready to prepare to see my grandfather because my grandfather never showed up at the airport. I think he was kind of aloof with that because he didn't want to connect himself with me at that time because I was his namesake. So I would always get somebody to pick me up. Jaime was quite the talker, Jewish guy. Uh, he'd tell me like how I looked. He said, hey, your grandfather didn't like, wouldn't like it if you had a beard. Can we stop by the house and shave it off first? So I agreed to do that. <laughs> 